Uh, good evening, afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to uh, welcome you all to the General Grand Council's uh, General Grand Master's Fireside Chat for July. Uh, tonight, we have the honor of having uh, most illustrious Archie Smallwood from uh, Kentucky be our guest speaker. He's the uh, past uh, Grand Illustrious Master of Kentucky. And uh, I would, uh, at this time, turn it over to most illustrious Archie. Thank you, most U.S. and General Grandmaster. It's an honor to be present with such distinguished people here participating. I think it's excellent that uh, all of us get together, have an opportunity to be together. You know, communication is a subject that is well known to all of us. And within that realm, I'd just like to uh, quote to you one thing. I think uh, Brother Webster had it right when he said what communication is in a general context is simply exchanging ideas and exchanging thoughts one with another. Now, sometimes you might think, well, in doing so, how can I exchange with people of different nationalities? Well, there's always a way to develop this and way to do it. And I think we as an international group understand this. Many of us speak English, many speak other foreign languages, of course, being interpreted. We get the message across, but basically we try to find out what is the message. And the message simply is that we try to exchange ideas. We try to understand. Understand, companions and brothers, I fully realize I'm preaching to the crowd. The chorus is right here amongst you. I know that you all have, in your own respective ways and areas, have developed communication sources with those within your own jurisdictions. I personally would like to thank uh, most U.S. General Grandmaster Monty Glover for allowing me to do this, as well as Steve Balky and Bill Snyder. We, all of them are fantastic, and they are doing what communication is all about. For example, this fireside chat, this singular purpose right here that we have is something that we are developing and it gets a, a way of expressing ourselves one to another. I would hope that other people, as we go along, utilize this to exchange ideas, to find out just what communication can do and how it can be developed into something that would be a useful tool for us in the future. Things that I really have a problem with understanding on communication is that we all talk about it, but a lot of times we don't implement it. Now, how can you implement it? One area of implementation is simply by correspondence. Another is simply by verbiage. We can speak to each other whether it be by text or whether it be by Zoom, as you have right before you, or whether it be just a simple telephone call. Most effectively, in person is what we would like to do. You know, I've been allowed a few minutes to open this up, and I think Monty has got the really good idea. Fireside chat, or in his own language, you might say in Hawaiian talk story. What is a talk story? Well, it's simply the fireside chat as we have now. My apologies if uh, I seem to go over things that you already know about. But as leaders, and most of you are, as leaders, you have seen what you need to do. For me to explain that to you would just be reiteration of what you already know. I know that when you are in a line such as I have been uh, uh, blessed to be in, such as the council line in my own jurisdiction, we have to exchange ideas through communication. You know, from way back even in the Stone Age, how did they communicate? <laughs> well, some of them knocked each other over the head explaining they did not want to be bothered. Others communicated by meeting tribe to tribe. Nowadays, we have 
various ways of communicating, Kating, such as what we're doing right now. An excellent tool. And I hope that you all do utilize this. I believe, and I've already heard previous conversation, that some here today have been communicated with the General Grand Council, and such as Monty and Steve and Bill and so forth like that. By doing so, they get the message of what they want to do, what they're willing to do, and what they are needed for. And you say, what am I needed for? Well, there's always a need for good quality people. And my brothers, you are good quality people. You know, our General Grand Council has endeavored, at least I feel, has endeavored within the last few years to communicate more information to the companions all through all the areas throughout the world. And I think by their means, by Steve and working with him and working with Monty now, that has been done. I congratulate them because previous to them, sorry to say, there might be some lack of communication, but they have developed it into a form to where they have information to make them better leaders than they already are. And I would also like to say that, you know, throughout the jurisdictions that we have, whether it be in the United States or around the world, wherever it may be, we as cryptic masons are doing an excellent job in a time when communicating is essential. One of the most essential things is that, let's face it, the fraternity as a whole has had losses, but by communicating, not to the people such as myself, as old as it, I am, you know, I'm knocking the door on Methuselah, but when we preach or talk to the young, this is what's essential. If we can talk to the young and get them more interested as the general grand council through the grand councils and to the subordinate councils are doing currently. And we are getting more cryptic masons aligning with us. I congratulate all that are participating, all that are part of this. And I hope, and I do pray. And the reason I say I pray, because being an ordained minister, believe me, I do a lot of praying. And I hope that you do as well. That not only cryptic masons, but our fraternity as a whole will increase and that we, we will show the world that masonry is a good thing, not what a lot of times, even in the past, we have been attacked on and saying that we aren't. We are the people who communicate to others just what our cryptic masons are all about. My brothers, I appreciate this opportunity, this time of speaking to you. I will not burden yourself down with additional time, but I will compliment the General Grand Council and its efforts by the leadership it has and the communication they have through their officers that they have throughout all jurisdictions and throughout the world. Again, I emphasize communication is the key. When somebody asks me, what is the big C? I know you would automatically think cancer, but to me, it's not. The big C is communication. Let's talk, let's have fireside chats. Let's get more involved with each other because I foresee an enormous outcome if we do that. If we watch the big C, if we take care of it, if we communicate, if we let each other know what's going on, and I found out by experience in a lesser quantity than the General Grand Council, because I know how busy they are. But I found out through some of the grand lines that I've been through that if you talk, if you explain, if you have workshops, or in this case, fireside chats, with those who are part of the organization, your organization will grow. Your organization will get better. 
you know, leadership is communication. It's not just giving out orders like you would be in the army or other organizations. It is a two-way street. That's why the far side chats are so important. I would hope that in the future, we would get more companions associated with the fireside chats. And to you, Monty, congratulations on what you have done thus far. And I look forward to seeing what else goes on. It'll be interesting when we have the General Grand Council meeting coming up in August. Looking forward to that as well, because that is another way or an expression of communication. Because what happens there, we can carry it back to our grand councils, to our subordinate councils, and so forth. May God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. You have done an excellent job. And I thank you for being open with your communication. Anytime someone calls on you, that you will follow through. Because communication is not only talking back and forth, but the follow through thereafter. So God bless you. Thank you, Monty. I appreciate it. And I turn it back over to you. Thank you, Archie. Uh, does anybody have any questions or comments for Archie? Feel like I should be writing him a check for such nice words. <laughs> <laughs> Only telling the truth, Monty. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, General I, Grandmaster, um, actually, there are a couple of conversation points, but would you like me to go ahead and break this right here for a second? Uh, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So yeah, you know, uh, communication was one of the three big things that I wanted to focus on uh, in my term. Um, you know, it, coming into this um, in the middle of the COVID pandemic, uh, you know, every Masonic leader, uh, notwithstanding everybody else in the world, was uh, really struggling with how to uh, basically keep everything going, how, how to keep everything together. And really the only tool that we had uh, at our, our disposal was communication, you know, reaching out to one another, uh, be it individually or as a group and, and checking on what was going on and, and what can be done and how to help and, and reaching out and making sure that everybody knew that, you know, we weren't just hunkering down in some bunker someplace. We were actually uh, working and trying to continue to progress uh, cryptic masonry forward. Um, so yeah, the, the Zoom platform uh, has been a tremendous boon for us. It, it, it really, I think, uh, let the General Grand Council shine. And I, I'm so blessed that I have such a great team of guys uh, working uh, with us. Uh, from from Steve and the uh, technology committee to all my officers uh, that have been great about uh, putting things together for us and uh, as well as those that have taken the time to be speakers and participate in these conversations. Um, my, my hope is, is the fireside chat will continue to grow. I think uh, we have a low turnout possibly because of uh, vacation time, everybody's got stuff going on with family. And, uh, you know, I, I think that that can be challenging for uh, a lot of people. But uh, I'm, I'm really appreciate, appreciative of those that do take the time uh, out of their uh, Sunday to uh, spend time with us. Um, my intent, as I've said before, is that this was more for the rank and file member of cryptic masonry to be able to interact with the executive leaders of the uh, international body, uh, ask us questions, uh, challenge us, uh, help us help us grow and provide the types of services uh, within our uh, ability to to uh, make happen uh, a reality. Um, you know it. it Anybody can sit in their 
office and think up things that they think people need. Um, but oftentimes what one person thinks is a need, another person has absolutely no use for it. Um, and what you might not even consider is a, a real need for somebody else. So without a way to exchange uh, that information uh, and to bring it forward, it's very difficult to work together as a, a, a group, as a cooperative, uh, to make sure that the cryptic masonry remains strong. Um, again, does anybody have any questions or comments? Kind of curious what might be going on in your jurisdictions, what, what you've seen uh, over the past year and a half or so, uh, has has your jurisdiction, your 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 cryptic leadership, have, what kinds of things have they put in place to increase communication? Well, General Grandmaster, if I might, I'll just throw something out that uh, we've seen a lot of in uh, in the in the recorders conference calls, and as we are all going back to. Uh, in-person meetings, there's a lot of discussions about uh, whether or not, you know, whether Zoom is, is going to remain a part of our normal habit of interaction. So I would, I would pose the question, you know, how is Zoom going to continue to be a part of your interactions in your jurisdictions? Because I think that now that people were kind of I'm going to use the word forced. Um, obviously, there's some that still don't. But as we have been more exposed in in the time of COVID, um, there is a, a more available opportunity through the electronic meeting format. So I would throw that out there. And uh, General Grandmaster Kevin Sample has his hand up. I, I see that. Kevin, do you want to respond to, to Steve or do you have a separate point? Yeah, no, uh, maybe a separate point, maybe not. Um, I, I, I just a, a side comment. Uh, we brought in, I think, 27 at the York Wright Festival in Kansas City yesterday in the council. Uh, we had another 14 two weeks before that in Springfield. Um, I'm doing uh council work tomorrow and a week from uh this month uh i did uh, council degrees in st louis uh two weeks ago um degrees are happening all over the place uh we're also faced with um kind of a going back into shutdown mode in the kansas city area it's a new covid hot spot um, the government is starting to sh uh, lock down facilities again in Kansas City. I was supposed to be there next week for meetings, and they all got canceled due to COVID. Um, but the one thing I wanted to talk about, I really appreciated uh, Archie's comments about communication. Uh, I sort of got into this job 20 years ago because of a failure uh, of the, the Grand York right to be able to communicate effectively. And... Um, um, I, uh, I, I have never shied away from taking my big paddle and, and stirring things up. And this, somehow or another, I wound up with this job and I can't seem to get rid of it. But the interesting thing that I have found uh, going through the last 15, 18 months is that through Zoom, WebEx, whatever, uh, we start just in the state of Missouri, we started having, um, instead of meeting once a year or twice a year to have officer meetings, we started meeting monthly in all three bodies. Um, and it was amazing what we were able to accomplish. I mean, there's some, some legacy mindsets. I think that's the nicest way I can put that. Uh, with regards to using technology uh, in the Masonic fraternity. Uh, but even those legacy mindsets got engaged uh, in using 
this new technology to have officer meetings, to have committee meetings, to have planning and what I call headbanging sessions. I was really surprised and pleasantly surprised to see how much we were able to get done in the last 15 to 18 months by using this new technology and not dragging people. You know, Missouri is a fairly large state, you know, and from dragging people four or five hours away to an hour long or two hour long meeting that was not very well planned and almost a waste of everybody's time. And then they've got another four or five hour ride home. The use of this technology has allowed us to be able to communicate a lot more effectively with each other. And now that we are back open, um, I got him. Uh, now that we are back open, uh, we're still using this technology because it has proven itself to be efficient. Um, so I think, you know, I, I don't want to say there's you know, something good to come out of this, this pandemic, but from a Masonic communication standpoint, uh, the AMD lecture series, uh, the Grand Lodge of Missouri is doing lecture series. I'm, I've seen uh, lecture series out of North Carolina and New Jersey and California and Texas. And it's amazing because now we can share uh, amazing um, presentation like, you know, the one we had today. Uh, with a much broader audience and get people a lot more engaged uh, than they ever were before, all while doing it in the convenience of your home. And I just think that's a win for everybody. And I see the General Grand Council doing this. Uh, and I also, I've, I've blown so much smoke uh, around money that, you know, uh, he probably can't breathe, but I've just truly been impressed with the way the Joe Grand Council uh, has been operating uh, for the past couple of years, and they just keep getting better and better. And so kudos to everyone. Um, I'll kick my soapbox to the side, but uh, I'm just really impressed with uh, the way things are going and, you know, us being flexible enough to be able to adapt um, has, I think is going to be extremely fruitful for us in the future. So thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, a lot of what you, you said that, um, you know, being able to use uh, this type of platform as particularly uh, within the organization, within the General Ground Council itself, uh, has raised the bar of communication and understanding well above anything that it's ever had before. Um, when I first came on, uh, basically the officers of the General Grand Council got together twice a year and had a group discussion. It tended to be in the General Grand Master's hotel room. Uh, and uh, anybody that's ever had the pleasure of having to uh, attend a meeting in somebody's hotel room. It's really awkward sitting on a bed, uh, ha particularly if you're my size and, you know, it makes the bed tilt. Uh, it, uh, it, it's, it's awkward. Um, but more importantly, you can't run an organization when you only really effectively communicate face-to-face -face a couple times a year. Um, you need to have a way to see people's expression. You know, you can communicate a lot on email, but emotion is is one of those things that just doesn't come across well on, on email, either positive or negative. Uh, people, depending upon the mood when they're reading your email, will, will um, read into your email their emotions, um, and that causes a lot of confusion. Uh, so I, I've really enjoyed Zoom, and you know, uh, of course, at, at work, I've been a home worker for many years. And, uh, you know, we, we at work moved to doing a lot of things uh, through Zoom plat plat or uh, a video platform. And um, I found that these, these meetings that we would have that, you know, you come in for a, a one or a two day 
event where you know you're going to be locked in a room with a bunch of people to go over stuff um inevitably you would get there and just keeping your attention uh you know you're you're jet lagged you're you're uncomfortable in your hotel room whatever the case may be there's too many things to keep you engaged in the actual conversation but with this platform it i find it much easier to stay focused on the on the work at hand uh and while you can get off track uh now and then it, it's fairly easy to uh bring everybody back on track and it's easier to control the conversation to where people aren't necessarily talking over one another uh, you don't have the side conversations you may have side chat going on but but the conversation itself still uh, you don't get the noise and I think that for someone like me uh, noise is distracting and I'll be focused on what the conversation is over here and not paying attention to the one that I should be paying attention to so uh, I found it very useful uh, I know General Grand Council fully intends to continue to use this platform as a way to communicate. Uh, it's it's managed to shrink our world tremendously. Um, you know, we've been able to uh, to bring in and have regular meetings with people all over the world, and it uh, has been very effective, I think. And I think it uh, has the opportunity to continue to be that even once we start meeting face to face. So, uh, anybody else have anything? Welcome, any comments? Any, go Carl's, ahead. Carl's got his hand raised. Oh, okay, go ahead, Carl. One comment that I was going to make uh, with regard to remarks from Kevin was that he was talking about the legacy people. <laughs> One of the lodges that I belong to, the average age is 82, 83 years old. And we have a lot of people in their 90s and late 80s. And we probably were the most active lodge on the Zoom platform in the entire state. <laughs> and our, our older members absolutely loved being able to get together on Zoom, see one another, have an opportunity to talk about what's going on with them. And so I think we need to be careful when we make judgments about older people. Now, I may have gray hair on my head, but in this lodge, I'm going to say I'm one of the kids. There you go. It's all perspective, isn't it? Yeah, the, um, you know, I've, I've seen uh, people from all levels of age groups get on the Zoom and, you know, there are people that are, are challenged by technology and, and, you know, I found that it doesn't necessarily uh, have to do with age. Uh, some people just don't like technology. Um, they would rather be living where your background is there, Carl, uh, as opposed to uh, dealing with, with technology. And I get that, it's, it's appealing. Uh, sometimes uh, the technology of the world just gets overwhelming and, and you wanna shut it out. But, uh, you know, it's, I, I just, I love being able to get together with, with the people and be able to see them. Uh, it helps me when I go to a meeting, it helps me recognize them uh, because uh, photos never uh, fit the actual person's uh, in-person image. And so it's, it's always good to see people. And, and, you know, a lot of times on the Zoom meetings, we can be more relaxed and uh, we have our own surroundings around us and we can have our frosty beverage of whatever type we want and uh, just be more comfortable. Uh, and I like that we don't have to necessarily put on the airs of, of uh, our stations uh, while we're on these meetings. It's, and I enjoy that because I, I'm not one that's real big on the pomp and circumstance. I'm a pretty laid back guy for the most part. So, uh, John Grant Master, we have another hand raised. 
and I'm not going to even attempt to butcher his name, so I'm just going to say we have another hand raised. Go ahead, John. Okay, thank you. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to say thank you about the Archie presentation. I think it was great because if there are any doubts about the, the importance of the communication within the, the organization, what the pandemic has shown to all of us that it's elementary and it's fundamental to the organization because uh, in Portugal, if that if that wasn't working about the, the Zoom meeting, I think we have lost we have had lost much more things that you can have lost with this pandemic because the communication through the, the Zoom meetings, it was one element that keep the councils together and keep the people get together uh, once a month and to know each other, to talk about cryptic machinery, but also to talk about one another, what the problems they were, were spending were they through the, this pandemic. So. It was f fundamental to the to the to this kind of 18, 20 months that we had through this pandemic. So it's and and now and now uh, as the 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 landlord is, it's I think we're going to start opening after September because we now have kind of another uh, increased numbers of the of the COVID with this kind of Delta variant. So. Not so many deaths in the hospitals, but a lot of uh, infections. So it's got starting uh, with this confused in in Portugal. So, but probably, I think hoping that after September we're just starting to in-person meetings. But what I would like to say is that because of the, the Grand Lodge, I think, and I think the Grand Council in Portugal, I think is is going to advise that also. We're going to have kind of mixed uh, meetings because. As the Blue Lodges have uh, got together two, twice a month, so probably after September they're going to have one in-person meeting and the other one it will be by Zoom. So I think the that's, I think, I don't know, but I think I have the idea that something that is going to be, uh, that have came to stay a lot, <laughs> I don't know, one year or two, but probably I'm, I think I, they, that's a thing that came to stay uh, a lot, uh, quite a time because, you know, the the age is not only a problem of the state. So you have got uh, in the councils that in the blue lodge a lot of people elderly. So, and and through Zoom they can just be sitting at uh, at home or wherever and quietly and have a meeting with all the people of the council. Of, uh, and so it's quite happy for I think for elderly people and for everyone. So. And for that, I think it's it's just wonderful. I think Archie just pointed a thing that probably I don't know, but I think there are not so many when councils and when lodges invest that amount of time in communication. It, once again, I've come and I I I'm, I, I, I go to the to to the beginning of this intervention. Communication it's fundamental in this organization and in 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 masonry and. I think they are all said. I think the general council have done uh, an excellent work about the communication. And I think that's just, just like the cement that kind of united all because you've got, I, I have assisted this um, fireside set quite, uh, I think from the beginning. And what I can see it's there, we've got people all, all around the world that in in the other way, it's, it probably will be very very difficult to get together every month, guys <laughs> from Italy, Greece, <laughs> Cyprus, United States. So this is great, and I think and I say thank you to the to the general council and all the officers. Okay. I think it will done a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, yeah, um, you. We've been uh, slowly rolling out. We've we've had from the very beginning. We've had a uh, uh, monthly uh, regional recorders call um, in the uh, in the U.S. and uh, more recently we've uh, started it up in uh, Latin America, where we have a, a monthly recorders call that Steve runs, uh, and I try to be on uh, all of them as much as I can. Um, and then uh, our hope is very soon that we're going to start rolling out 
uh, recorders calls for Europe and Africa. Um, and again, uh, I think that, you know, there's several of you that attend uh, on here, the, the recorders calls that, that we have. And I think they've been very effective at, at getting uh, communication going. It, it, it provides a great outlet for uh, saying, you know, uh, catching balls before they're dropped too far and uh, uh, bringing in ideas to move things forward and has definitely helped us, I think, improve. And I think that uh, once we get uh, Europe going uh, with these calls, it'll help bring us closer together. Uh, it's very difficult. Uh, the challenges that we're going to have with the European uh, recorders uh, is obviously going to be one of language. Um, you know, with Europe, we have how many is it like seven different languages that we have to deal with? Uh, yeah. 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 And uh, the, uh, um, you know, I think the predominant language would be French because uh, all the African uh, councils okay. speak French and, and, of course, France. Um, but uh, my hope is, and, and I'm, I'm pretty comfortable that most of the recorders are going to have a pretty good uh, uh, handle on English, so we should be able to get communications going. But we've also worked uh, really, really hard to uh, when we have big events uh, like our triennial, we've we we put up back channels uh, where we have interpreters that are uh, interpreting things and, and communicating uh, what is being said uh, either on something like uh, WhatsApp or some other platform so that uh, uh, everybody understands what's going on. Um, I'd love to have something like France has for their Grand Lodge where they have live interpreters uh, and you sit there with your headphones on like you're at the UN and, and someone's in your ear, you just turn to the channel of the language you, you speak and uh, there's someone there that uh, translates every word for you. It's uh, really quite an experience. Um, if you ever get a chance to go to, to the Grand Lodge of France's uh, annual communication, um, it's it's an experience. There's I think 500 or 5,000 plus people in that, and it's a huge event. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting back over there to Portugal so we can actually do some business. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I was actually in in Portugal when uh, the the just shutdown the, started. Yeah, just the week before. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> and, and the 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 sad part was all the meetings got canceled the great yeah. part was is that now i'm i'm in portugal for a week with no meetings but there were no tourists and so <laughs> i Jean took me around to a lot of places and and uh had some wonderful food and um saw some great things that you didn't have to wait in line for which was nice there were some that were closed and you know that was to be expected yeah, uh, but uh, it it worked out really well. Uh, but I am looking forward to getting back over there to to be with you and the companions and and uh, meeting everybody in person. Yeah, so hopefully next March, not if not even before. I hope that we could. I have. I Just, think I, that's that's doable. I think that that will happen. Yeah. So. Yeah, my hope is too is that. Uh, in 2022, everybody gets their schedules back to normal. Uh, that's been one of the big challenges this year is, oh, we're having it on Zoom. Oh, no, we're going to have it in person. No, we're going to have it in Zoom. Oh, we're going to have it on a different date. And, oh, we're not having it at all. And it's I been know. kind of a nightmare keeping track of all of the different jurisdictions and, and the meetings that are, are going on and aren't going on and, and uh, which ones are in person or not. So uh, a lot of overlaps this year. Um, so it makes it really challenging for us. But, uh, uh, you know, we, we do our best to have representation at all the meetings. Uh, when we have them on Zoom, it's great because uh, it's usually pretty easy for all of us to be there as long as we're not tied up in some other meeting. Uh, we've been on multiple meetings at the same time where, you know, you've got one computer here with one me and another one over there and and you're multitasking and so uh it's it's uh because we have already 
I had one year gap because this year was the supposedly the election year, but we didn't have it in March. So I don't know if we're going to have it uh, before the end of the of the year, but certainly we're going to have it in next March next year. Yeah, there's there were a lot of jurisdictions that uh, basically held everybody over for a year, and yeah. I understand that. Um, so anything else on communication? Okay, I don't see anybody's hand raised. Um, just to kind of give you a brief uh, update on some of the things that we've been doing here at General Grand Council. Um, if you uh, get the weekly decryption, you probably saw an article that was put out by Bill about a new committee uh, that we're putting together. It's a advisory committee on international affairs. Uh, we don't have the people all selected yet for that committee, but uh, it's going to be a standing committee that is uh, intended to help us navigate the challenges of uh, the International Cryptic Mason uh, environment. Um, we're, we're going to be looking for people that have uh, experience in dealing with uh, international um, Masonic organizations. Um, and it, uh, it, it'll be, I think, a good group. It's not one that's basically where we're going to abdicate our decision making to, uh, but they're going to help us do some of the due diligence that's necessary if we're looking at expanding into a new country, or if there's uh, some issues in the country, they can help us work through them, find out what all the situation is. Um, and then uh, report back to us and then we can formulate a plan of action uh, with, uh, with, with good information. So uh, my hope is, is that I'll make it a lot easier for us to, um, to help the international community continue to uh, uh, progress and grow. Uh, masonry in, in the international space is uh, interesting. Uh, it can be challenging, um, but uh, I've, I've met so many wonderful Masons uh, from all over the world, and, and it's uh, really been an honor to be able to, to interact with them. Um, so, um, you know, that's going to be uh, under development. Uh, it's, it's not, I don't know, we may have something uh, more concrete at the uh, Triennium uh, session, the first session in Minneapolis uh, to announce on it, but uh, you know, I don't want to rush it. I want to make sure it's put together well and has a good, um, uh, good mandate as to what their role is and, and make sure that we put side rails on there for, uh, uh, so they stay within uh, their, their mission. Um, I kind of took a break from cryptic masonry this weekend, uh, except for this meeting. Um, I had the uh, pleasure of attending a, uh, the Georgia de Malay um, annual meeting. Uh, it was their first one in two years. And so they had uh, lots of awards to give out. They had uh, two years worth of awards uh, to present. And then uh, uh, Maureen, my wife, uh, accompanied me last night to their uh, gala banquet. And they really did a nice job. It, it's really good to... Uh, to, to be able to hang out with the Demolay guys. I, I'm, I'm a senior Demolay from way back. And uh, it's always good to see the great youth of, of our Masonic organization uh, and the wonderful men that uh, they're creating and, and the young ladies as well. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it, it was a nice, uh, nice break for me and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, Again, we've got the triennial session coming up. Uh, probably lots of uh, uh, lots of uh, communication will be coming out on that uh, uh, flurry of updates and stuff like that. So keep an eye out for any of that. Uh, you should have seen uh, again if you get the decryption. If not, uh, check out the website. Uh, there's articles uh, for all of the uh, different legislation that's uh, being put forward. Uh, there may be one uh, additional piece of legislation along with our uh, ritual uh, that we hope to uh, uh, ratify 
the provisional ritual with some errata um, at, at that session so that uh, we can put that to bed and get it off our plate. And I believe, Steve, have you got anything else you want to put out? Or anything I glaringly forgot? Uh, General Grandmaster, I think that uh, you hit it. Uh, we do have one constituting as well, and we're going to try and do the year in review real quick at Triennial as well. Other okay. than that, uh, uh, we, we have regularized the schedule on the uh, General Grand Council presents, and that might be worthy of note. Uh, it's escaping me at the moment, but what is that schedule? Uh, just like this is the fourth Sunday, we are doing the second Sunday at uh, noon mountain time, which is earlier for Europe, <laughs> so that they can uh, participate. So uh, it's noon mountain time, or I believe that is uh, six o'clock UTC. Great. And if you haven't had an opportunity to check those out, uh, this was a, a program that was set up uh, by Reed Fanning uh, last year uh, under the uh, uh, branding of Utah Presents. Um, and uh, when Reed uh, went out as Grand Illustrious Master, he's, he's on our education committee and he graciously offered uh, to continue those programs under the uh, branding of General Grand Council presents, and there are some outstanding speakers that have been on those uh, meetings, and they're all available to look at on um, on the YouTube uh, channel, uh, and I believe we have links to them all on our website as well. Correct, Steve? We've got links to them. If you don't remember it, just look for Cryptic Masons International. Uh, after you go to YouTube, just do a search for Cryptic Masons International. And subscribe, hit the like bell, that kind of stuff. Um, other than that, uh, if you've been on some of the recorders calls, uh, Steve has been uh, going over a lot of our different programs that we have, uh, the awards and recognition programs that we have. Um, we've got some uh, a new one coming out that's going to be great. And I, I tell you one of the things I'm really looking forward to uh, is uh, getting our new ambassadors jewels out uh, to uh, our ambassadors. Everybody's been waiting on those along with their business cards and name tags, which, which are being done right now. So hopefully uh, soon we'll have them. Uh, I'm thinking probably those that are going to be a triennial, you'll get them at the triennial session. Um, the Aloha shirts for the people that have ordered Aloha shirts. Uh, those are being uh, shipped as we speak, and hopefully we'll, those that are going to be a triennial, they'll all be available there. And um, we've got uh, new grand, uh, grand and, and, uh, uh, grand and, and regular uh, cryptic uh, officer's jewels uh, that we put together that are uh, based on the, the traditional designs uh, by Mackie. And uh, we're going to be offering those for, for purchase for any grand councils or, or councils that uh, would like to uh, uh, purchase those. If they're going through a, uh, a regular refresh of their regalia, it's a great opportunity to, uh, to implement uh, traditional jewels uh, based on Mackie's work. So, uh, does anybody have any questions for me or any comments, uh, good or bad? I'm open to anything. Any concerns? General Grandmaster, if I may for a minute. Yes, sir. I uh, just want to remind that we got that South Central Conference coming up in September 16th through 19th. And that's up in Kansas and down here in Louisiana, we got ours in our final preparations for, for the 2022 uh, South Central Conference up in uh, Shreveport. Uh, we have established the hotels. I think they go, they go do all that uh, announcements at the uh, General Grant, I mean, the uh, South Central um, 
up in, uh, in Kansas in September. Uh, um, hearing that's 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 the last words I've got. They already finalized the hotels and all by now. Just just a heads up if anybody wants to come down to the south in this hot, humid, rainy weather, it's more, more than welcome. Yeah, sounds great. In fact, I have your uh, paper. You can't see it on my screen, but uh, I have the paperwork that I'm actually filling out right now to attend. Um, did have a question. Um, we fly into Kansas City, correct? Kansas Kansas City is the closest to, yes, can, uh, Overland. Um, um, Overland Park. Yeah. Overland Park, yes. Uh, and okay. what? Will there be a shuttle or you guys got there? There is no shuttle, but what, what we did, we got, we have seven people coming from New Orleans to, uh, to, uh, Overland Park. And we found the cheapest route, the cheapest way would be to take the, uh, super shuttle. Okay. From the hotel, from the airport to the, um, uh, hotel. And then they're going to pick us up at the hotel on Sunday and bring us back to the airport and it turned out for seven people it turned out to 300 and like 13 dollars 40 44 dollars and 80 cents per person uh round trip so that's that's it we thought about cars and renting cars and we it was about 200 something dollars to rent a car and all it's gonna do is sit in a parking lot so right. i think the super shuttle was the best deal you can call just go right online and make it make a reservation and um it was it's pretty cool and we, we have two vans, so we got we got seven people. It's it's it, it should it's gonna work out. I, I hope it's gonna work. But the trouble is with south with we we were going with Southwest. Uh, we had a nonstop to and from. Of course, they canceled any nonstops from Kansas to New Orleans again. So they had to reroute us out to Dallas and all that all that stuff. So uh, just be careful if if anybody does go Southwest, make make sure you. Have, there, from from us there, there is no nonstops. So, Monty, you won't have to worry too much about getting to the hotel because your your deputy general grand master will, I'm sure, pick you up at the airport and deliver you promptly to the hotel. Is he safe to ride with? Well, <laughs> so that's that's a relative observation, and I'll leave that up to you. Well, General Grant, you're more than welcome to ride with us, but I don't know if you want to ride with these, these seven people from New Orleans. Yeah. Oh, that'd be crazy. It will be. <laughs> bring bring some boudin balls and we'll have a good time, right? It will never make it down over there. <laughs> It'll be going on the airplane. There you go. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going through and setting up uh, all my flights and stuff. Uh, I'm going to be going to uh, uh, Italy. They're having their grand session. Um It'll be their first grand session since getting their charter back. And um, uh, they've had a really rough time getting things going um, with changes in schedules and finding venues and other uh, local issues. Uh, but uh, that's going to be happening in uh, November. And uh, so I'll be going there and to Milan um, and uh, getting to see those those companions and looking forward to that. Um, so with that, uh, if nobody has anything else, uh, we'll we'll call it a night. I again, I appreciate everybody being here. And Archie, I want to thank you again for taking the time to uh, do a presentation for us. And uh, it was uh, very enjoyable and. I'm uh, honored at the the wonderful things that you had to say about us, and and as as with your comments, Kevin. So it's it's always good to, to hear we're doing a good job, and I know that uh, you guys are also uh, the kind of companions that uh, I really value because when we're not doing good, you'll step up and tell us we're not doing good too, and that is a very important part of communication. So. Um, I, I, I really appreciate all of you. So with that, I, I uh, bid you peace and I uh, hope you have a, a wonderful rest of your weekend and, and a great work week ahead. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Have a nice evening. Mahalo. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mahalo,
and Steve, you can call me whenever you want next week. Okay. All right. Thanks, Joe. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Bye bye. Vern, you still there?